<coughs> Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, we continue solving problems which I qualify as like non-standard problems, not related to just to check your theoretical knowledge, but just to force you to think about certain things. And the purpose is actually to to give you some material to practice um, this analytical approach to different problems. Mass presents a perfect tool to develop your analytical and creative abilities and uh, obviously you will be using these everywhere in all kinds of industries wherever you work. So mathematics is just a gym for your brain so to speak. And these problems are the perfect tool to exercise your um, creative abilities. Okay, so today we will consider a couple of problems. Well, actually, it's a one general problem with two different variations and three different ways to, to solve this problem. Okay, so it's trigonometry. And um, what, uh, what is very important is to have certain theoretical knowledge before you approach these problems. So that was the purpose of the course Mass for Teens, presented on the same site, unizor.com, where this course is. Now, this course is Mass Plus and Problems, and the prerequisite is Mass for Teens. Over there, I do have certain uh, theoretical material about trigonometry, and uh, we will also use complex numbers here. And Euler's formula. So these are things which you have to basically know from your regular theoretical course of mathematics. And again, if you don't know anything about this, these topics, go back to whatever the source of information, including Mass for Teens course on Unizor.com. So this is for those people who understand perfectly well the uh, trigonometry, the basic course of trigonometry, and basic course of complex numbers, whatever is supposed to be touched here. Um, okay, so trigonometry, and here is two problems, which are actually variations of the same problem. Consider you have a trigonometric series, sine of x plus sine of x plus y plus sine of x plus 2y plus etc plus sine of x plus n y. This is the sum which I would like to evaluate or presented in a more compact form it's uh, sine of x plus k times y, where k is from 0 to n. So I have to evaluate that formula. Now, um, in the regular course of uh, school mathematics, you probably learned how to summarize the arithmetic series when there is a constant difference between um, consecutive members, or geometric series when there is a constant factor from one to the next one. This is neither of those. So, what do we do? Now, um, before you proceed, I do suggest you to think about this, obviously. Now, I will present two different approaches to this problem. The second problem actually is the, sign, the sum of cosines, which will be analogous. But in any case, I will present two different approaches. One, trigonometry related, and another related to complex numbers and Euler's formula. So, right now, I'm going to present the first solution uh, related to pure trigonometry. And it's kind of a trick. So, whenever you need some kind of a trick to solve the problem, the um, question is how you come up with this trick. Well, maybe some smart guy did, but uh, and since then it's a known trick, so to speak. Uh, but if you don't know this, you have to really come up yourself with some very artificial, 
kind of a trick, I've used the, the word trick, to basically simplify this problem to, to solve it. Now, um, obviously if this is the first problem of this type, that's very difficult. I mean, you might, but anyway. Again, I can actually suggest you a hint. You have to multiply this by something which will drastically reduce the whole thing and basically all members will, will can cancel each other except two of them which are the very first one and the very last one. Okay, that's a hint, so to speak, right? So, with this hint, again, you can stop the video and try to come up with this particular um, approach. Again, if you don't, I will continue talking about this, but my problem is that the more problems uh, of this type you will solve, the greater will be your repertoire of tricks, so to speak. So the next one would be maybe easier or faster for you to come up with a certain artificial um, uh, steps which you have to which you have to make to solve this particular problem. So, in this particular case, an artificial kind of a step which you have to make, artificial in terms of it's not really obvious. It's not like according to the theory you have to do this. There is no theory, but there is this particular trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my sum by sine of y over half. Why? Well, again, as I said, this is a trick which helps, and you will see that this, this helps. How did I come up with this? I didn't, quite frankly. Long, long time ago, when I was probably in high school, I read about this or something like this. And since that, it just came into my repertoire of tricks, as I said. So now I basically know that it's supposed to be something like this. I remember that I have to multiply it uh, by something from my school years. Now, uh, when I was preparing this lecture, I was just thinking about what should I really do. I was thinking maybe I should multiply by sine or by cosine, by y or by y over half, etc. So I just figured around and found that this particular thing does work. So, what happens if you will multiply it by this? Well, in the short description that would be sum of k from 0 to n, sum of x plus ky times sine of y over half. Okay, fine. Now, what is this? Okay, now, remember cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. If I will put minus here, I will put plus here, right? How can I get sine times sine from this? So I would like to cosines to cancel out. I will do the following. Sine uh, alpha times sine beta is equal to... Okay, I have to um, take um, difference that would be plus here. And I will subtract sum. It will be minus, but with a minus it will be plus, and cosine will cancel each other. And that would be double, double, so I have to put one half. So this is the formula, which is derivation of a simple formula, which you have to know from trigonometry, cosine of uh, sum or a difference of two angles. So I will use this formula. This. So, sine times sine. This is alpha, this is beta. So, I have to equate it to one half. Well, actually, yeah, sum k from 0 to n. This is one half. And here I will put cosine of the difference. So, it's a cosine of x plus ky minus 1 
half of y minus cosine of x plus ky plus y. Is it better than it was before? Yes. And here is y. This is my sine. This is s sine times sine of half of y, right? That's what it is. Now, why is it better? Well, think about it this way. Um, let me just get rid of this too. I'll put it here. Okay? So, let me just consider this sum. The first member is, with k is equal to 0, would be cosine of x minus y over half minus if k is equal to 0, cosine of x plus y half. Next, with k is equal to 1, what will be? x plus y minus half of y, right? So it's cosine of x uh, plus y over half minus, if k is equal to 1, would be three seconds. So cosine of x plus 3y over 2 plus. Next one. k is equal to 2. 2 minus half is uh, 3 seconds. Okay, so it would be cosine of x plus 3y over 2 minus 2 and a half. So it's 5 half. I think by now you realize what happens. Minus, plus, minus, plus, Mi minus, plus, etc. So what will be a couple of last members? A couple of last members will be when k is equal to minus 1 it will be cosine of x plus um, n minus 1 minus 1. So it would be n minus 3 halves of y minus cosine of um, x plus n minus 1 plus half. That would be n minus half n minus one half of y plus and the last one when the k is equal to n I will have cosine x plus n minus one half y minus cosine of x plus n plus one half of y So that happens. This would be with the previous one. And what remains is this one and this one. Minus cosine of x plus n plus one half. And this is equal to this, from which our sum of sines is equal to, uh, we have to have this one, um, well I can put it 2n plus 1 over 2, why? Doesn't really matter. Divided by 2 
sine of y over here. Okay? So this is a compact expression of this uh, trigonometric series. I call it trigonometric series because it's sines and sines and sines. Okay? So a trick multiplied by this particular factor. Again, uh, you cannot just easily come up. Nobody, If nobody told you about this, you have to come up with this yourself. And it's difficult if it's the first time of this particular problem. Actually, there are many problems of this kind when you have to do this kind of a trick to come up with a very easy solution. Well, again, the more tricks you learned, you read about or you heard about from something, the easier it will be for you to come up with something new. Because in, in, in practical life, you will always face certain problems which nobody taught you how to solve, which means you have to solve them yourself and come up with certain creative solution. This is a creative solution. So try to do as many of these as possible. And mathematics has millions of these particular kind of problems. And the more you do, the better you're prepared for real life. Now, the second problem, which is very similar to this one, is with the cosines. So I will just use the same approach just slightly different formulas will be. So these will be all cosines. Cosine, 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 cosine. And this will be also cosine. So what do we do to calculate this particular thing? Well, artificial uh, approach is exactly the same. You multiply by sine of y over half. <coughs> but now we have slightly different formulas. <coughs> it, uh, now, the first time it was sine by sine, which we converted into a difference. So every member was after multiplication, sine of something times sine, sine of this, and we convert it into difference. Now we have cosine and sine. So we have to, you know, develop slightly different approach. We have to uh, convert cosine times sine into a difference of something. Okay, so here is basically the formula. So you have sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine of alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha the sine of beta. So this is cosine and sine. So we have to extract it somehow from, from this. Well, if I will put minus here, it will be minus here, right? So if I will subtract from sine of alpha plus beta, if I will subtract sine of alpha minus beta, this will cancel each other, and this will be plus, minus, minus, well, the, the way how I want it, actually. So I need to subtract it, it will be two of those, so I have to have half of this, and that would be cosine alpha times sine beta. Exactly what we need. So this would be um, so I multiply it by S cos times sine of y over 2 would be equal to sigma k from 0 to n uh, cosine x plus k times y times sine of y over 2. So this would be alpha, this would be beta. So it's equal to sigma k is from 0 to n cosine times sine cosine times sine so it's a sine uh, okay it's one half uh, sine of their sum x plus k plus one half 
Why? Um, minus a sign of their difference x plus k minus one half y. And now what do we have? Same thing. All the members except except two will cancel each other. Okay, with k is okay. This is equal to s cosine times sine of y half. All right. So this is um, again. I will get rid of this too. I'll put it here. All right. The first member would be with k is equal to zero. Uh, it will be sine of x plus one half of y. So four is y. y over two. Minus sine of x minus y over two plus. Okay, with k is equal to one, I will have one and a half, three quarter, three, three seconds. X plus three seconds of y minus sine of x plus one minus one half. So it's just y we have. Plus sine of x is equal to two, two and one half. So it's x plus five y we have minus sine of x plus uh, one and a half. So, what happens here? It's slightly different, but, but anyway, it's it's still all out. This goes with this, this goes with this, this goes with this, and the one which is remaining is this one with k is equal to n. So the whole thing is equal to sine of x plus n plus one half y minus the very first one sine of x minus y over half. So this particular sum is equal to this divided by two sine of y half. And that's the answer. Now I have suggested two different ways um, I said I would suggest two different ways to, to solve this problem. So this first way is kind of a tricky. You have to somehow come up with this thought to basically do whatever I just said, to multiply by sine of y half. Here is another approach which arguably is more elegant uh, and gives you again relatively fast the result but it's completely different okay now we go to complex numbers and Euler's formula which can which which connects trigonometric functions and exponential function with complex argument i is obviously imaginary one, so-called. Square root of minus one, if you wish. Minus one, sorry. So, um, imaginary number, complex numbers. Again, this is a theory which you have to know, including this thing. On the course uh, Mass 14, I do spend some time basically introducing this formula and justification for this formula. And Euler is, by the way, a very famous mathematician, uh, Swiss, but uh, he spent a lot of time in Russia. It's one of the basically founders of Russian mathematics. Um, okay, so the Euler's formula, what does it give you? Well, here it is. Let's consider, um, let's consider e to the power i x plus k y 
and have sigma of this uh, where k from 0 to n. Now according to this that's basically sigma of um, cosine x plus k y plus i sine x plus k y from 0 to n. Now this is the real part, this is imaginary part. Real part comes with real part with all different case and imaginary. So I can actually uh, write it as I um, as sigma of x x plus ky plus I sigma sine of x plus ky. from 0 to n, from 0 to n. So i basically goes outside of sigma, um, and I have basically, this is the sum which I was considering the, fir uh, the second time, and this is the sum which I considered the first time. Now, being as it may, I will use this expression instead of this expression because this expression is equal to if I will consider just this one well it's sigma a to the power i x i i x times e to the power k y right right because whenever you are multiplying with the same base your uh, exponents are supposed to be uh, I, K, Y. Exponents are supposed to be added together. Now, E to the power of I, X is not dependent of, on, on K, so I can put it here. E to the power I, X, sigma, A to the power I, K, Y, K from 0 to N. Now, instead of putting this, I will put it this way. the power of k because as you know whenever you are whenever you are raising something to a power the exponents are multiplying so basically it's the same thing and what is this this is a geometric series with a factor e to the power of i y i i i i i y and uh, the factor, the first member and the factor are e to the power i y. So you can basically use the formula for geometric sequence to get the result of this. So what you will have as a result, you will have e to the power i x times um, this would be e to the power i n plus 1 minus 1 divided by e to the power of i y um, y minus 1 so I just used the formula for geometric series it's the last member uh, ne next after last member minus 1 divided by factor minus 1 in this particular case so this is the answer now it's not looking actually like we had before right why because it's a complex number, it should really separate uh, imaginary part from the real part. The real part would be answer to this, and the imaginary part would be, would, would be the answer to this one. Now, how to do this? This is, unfortunately, a little bit more tricky process. Not tricky, no, it's more calculation involved, which I definitely don't want to do it right now. I did it in the notes for this lecture. Every lecture in, in, on unizor.com has notes. So in the notes, I really converted into real and imaginary part, and I will have, and I had exactly the same answers as before. Here, I'm not going to do it. I suggest you to do it. But the most important part is probably to get rid of the i in the denominator. And for this, I just multiplied by uh, by e to the power of 
minus i y minus one uh, e to the power minus i y minus one, both numerator and denominator. And if you will multiply this by this, you will have only um, real only real number, primarily two minus two cosine of uh, y. That would be in the denominator, and the numerator you will just have to um, multiply and uh, convert it into cosine and uh, sine I using the Euler's formula, and it will eventually give you the answer. So, the more elegant this, uh, just because it's very fast, gives you both sums. It's more calculation intensive because it just at the very end, when you already have a formula in a complex representation, you have to go back to real and imaginary parts separately, and that will take some calculations. Again, all calculations I suggest you to try to do yourself, and again, check it against uh, my notes, which, which, which gives you the same answer as I had before. So that's, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes. They are very detailed, and uh, I might actually make a mistake, but probably I didn't. But anyway, the notes are correct, so every lecture has both, video and the notes on my unizero.com website. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>